Mm. Oh, didn't uh, didn't see you there. It's uh, Dylan from AYCB. It's been a while since you uh, last seen us. We've uh, oh, sorry, I forgot we didn't uh, <clears throat> have a second camera. Um, it's been a while since you've uh, seen us. Obviously, we've been um, in isolation. Um, there's been a lot going on in the world, and so we've seen a bit of a video content slowdown. But I am happy to say that we are back today with a very cool game, and that one is Stellar. And Stellar is a very cool two-player card game from Renegade Games. Now I know what you're thinking. You probably have two questions on your mind. One, how do I play this beautiful looking game? And two, your coffee looks delicious. I'm jealous. Where can I get some? Well, on your first question, I'm happy to say that today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to get Stellar to the table just a little bit quicker. And as for your second question about the coffee, <laughs> don't worry, this mug is empty. So like I said, Stellar is a two-player card game and it's easy building a sort of tableau in front of yourself and it has a really cool hand card management system as well. Um, but enough chat, let me just show you how to play and let me show you what makes this game so stellar. And if you'd like to exit the video after that bad joke, I don't blame you, just click the X in the corner, I'll understand. <laughs> To begin, give each player a set of 12 telescope cards and arrange them in front of each player like so. Find the five starter cards from the Celestial Object deck that are marked with a diamond in the lower right corner. Shuffle these five cards and then deal two to each player. Each player plays one of these two cards face up in the top spot of their telescope and the other face up in their notebook, which is the horizontal area directly below the telescope. Shuffle the remaining Celestial Object cards that form the deck and deal two cards to each player to form their starting hand. Place the five number cards in a row next to the deck. Then reveal five cards from the Celestial Object deck and place one below each number. Randomly choose a starting player and now you're ready to play. In Stellar, you're trying to maximize your points by strategically placing cards into two areas, your telescope and your notebook. Cards are separated into five types of objects, planets, moons, asteroids, interstellar clouds, and black holes. When adding cards to your telescope, you must always place adjacent to a card of the same type if it is possible to do so. Otherwise, you can place it wherever you would like. When placing into your notebook, you are trying to form long runs of numbers all of the same type, for instance 2, 3, 4, and 5. You will create a stack for each type of card in the horizontal notebook area and add to it as you go. You can add numbers in between as you collect them. For instance, adding this 3 between a 2 and a 4 that I already had in my notebook. At the end of the game, for each type of card, you will add up all the stars depicted on that type of card in your telescope. You will then multiply that number by the longest run of cards of that same type that you have in your notebook. We'll come back to final score near the end of the video, but I just wanted to go over some of the basics right now just to give you a little more context for when we get into turns. So let's jump into turn sequence. Uh, a turn in Stellar has four phases, and the first phase is to add a card to your hand. In this phase, you'll simply choose a Celestial Object card from the five cards showing in the row and add it to your hand. The second phase is play a card from your hand. In this phase, you'll choose one card from your hand and add it to one of two areas, your telescope or your notebook. Like I said before, if you play it in your telescope, it must be adjacent to an object of the same type if it's possible to do so. If you play it in your notebook, add to the stack of objects of that same type, or if it's the first card of that object that you're gaining for your notebook, create a new stack. The next phase is play a card from the row. Now look at the number on the card you already played in either your telescope or your notebook. You will then refer to the same number in the row of five cards and take the card beneath that number. You will play this card in whichever area you did not play a card in this turn already. If the number you are grabbing a card from does not have a card beneath it when you arrive at this phase, Play a card blindly from the top of the deck instead. The final step is refill the row and you will simply fill all the empty spots in the row with cards from the top of the deck. The game continues like this until the end of the 11th round at which point both players will have their entire telescope filled up. You will then have one final turn each. All this will consist of is you taking one of the cards remaining in your hand and playing it to your notebook. It's sort of like a free play right at the end. The other card will just be discarded. The game then ends and we would normally go to final scoring, but before we get into that, let's just go over a couple other key points that you should know. There are two special card types. One is the 6-0 card. This card will have a card type as normal, but when it's placed in your telescope, it will always be a 6. When placed in your notebook, however, you can choose if it is a 0 or a 6 depending on what is more advantageous to your current run of cards. Note that you do not have to decide what the number is when you play it. 
you can wait until the end of the game to decide. The other special cards are satellite cards. These do not count as their own type. When played in your telescope, it has no type and can therefore be played anywhere. When played in your notebook, it counts as the type of your choice, and you can slot it into whichever run of cards you would like to for the number indicated on it. Note, you can freely move your satellite cards between stacks until the end of the game. Okay, so let's get back to final scoring. As I mentioned before, the first thing you're going to score for is you're going to go by each type of card, and you're going to count up all the stars you have of that type in your telescope, and multiply it by the longest run of that same type in your notebook. You're gonna do that for every single type and both players are gonna do this and you're gonna write your scores on the scoring pad. So for instance, in this case, I would have five planet stars showing and I would multiply that five by three because I have a run of three planets in my notebook. I would score 15 points for planets. As I said, do this for all card types and then we move on to the next scoring category, which is section majorities. Your telescope is divided into three sections for scoring purposes. The top section here, the middle section here, and the bottom section here. Add up all the numbers in each section and compare them with your opponent. Whoever has the highest value in each section scores 10 points, meaning there are 30 points up for grabs here. And finally, if you manage to place one card of each type in your telescope, not counting satellites, you score a bonus 10 points as a diversity bonus. Add up the points and the person with the most wins. And that's how you play Stellar. Thank you so much for returning to the table with us. We hope you're all staying healthy. We hope you're all staying safe out there. Um, we know you're all hungry for board game content and we're gonna do our very best to keep you fed. See what I, see what I did there? All you can board, hungry, fed, Never mind. We'll see you next time.